open our eyes that we may see to follow the Sharice Johnson Moore here, your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. Today we are going to deep dive into Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 through 25, and the topic is fear in God's presence. Fear in God's presence. So I want you to get your Bibles, your tablets, or your cell phones, however you may read the word. And uh, get you something to drink, your coffee, tea, whatever, and uh, you know, or a snack or something. And let's sit back and deep dive into this chapter. Okay, so we are going to talk about Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 through 25, fear in God's presence. Okay, come on now, let's get busy. Chapter 6, 1 through 25. And it reads Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear. The Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, 
thy sons' sons all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then be well, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. He shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are around about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Least the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Messe. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he have commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in times to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. 
and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statues, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Deuteronomy 6, 1-25 Oh dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you teach us the way to go each and every day. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Lord, may you add a blessing to the reading of your word. The mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, now we see that Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 25 is speaking to the children of Israel, the next generation. In this chapter, he is speaking to the next generation in this book of Deuteronomy. He is basically giving the next generation all the instructions of what's going on what they're going to need, what they're going to have to have, what they're going to, you know, and his main focus is to teach them about God and what God has brought them from and where God is taking them to. Okay. And it's like a review of what he's already had to teach a generation before them. Now, it don't really, we'll find out, it doesn't say right now where Moses, how old Moses is, um, how old Joshua is, but it is in this in this whole chapter, it is about teaching Joshua how to lead like Moses. Moses sits down with Joshua and reviews everything with him. The Lord has taught him how to treat the generation before him. And he's giving them a review of what is that they're going to need on this next journey in the promised land. Now, as you know, Moses can't go in the promised land because he disobeyed God. So he is left to teach the next generation, but I can't go with them. I talked about that in one of my um, morning word and worship programs. And it says it was entitled, Everybody Can't Go With You. And this is, I can say, relatable to daily living. Because older people are older for a reason. And it (coughs) it brings back my remembrance of my grandmother. 
And, you know, they old and you don't think they know what they talking about and all sort of stuff. Just that, da, 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 right? But, in actuality, this is what they are talking about. When the elders sit down with the generations behind them, whether it be their great, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren, or their great 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 grandchildren, how old how old the children is, you know, you know that's coming behind them. It is good for us as young people to listen to our elders, cause they already been where we going. It's so true in this in this Bible. It teaches generations behind the elders. It teaches that generation of what to do, what not to do, and the, and the advice that they should they should listen to. Because older people have already been where we at, or where we going, or where they see us going. And sometimes our hard headedness prolongs our time. It being hard headed shortens our time. I'm gonna say it like this. It says in the Bible, when you honor thy mother and thy father, that day should be long on earth. But when you start disobeying and you start um how could I say this? Disobeying, um, mistreating, disrespectful behavior towards your elders, your day is gonna be cut short. That's in the Bible. And there is always going to be somebody older than you to teach you what not to do and what to do in your life. No matter what stage or what age or what, somebody older can always teach you something in your life. And... That's why it's good to give your elders respect when they ask for it. Not to talk back to your elders. Not to disrespect, cuss your elders out. You know, or, you know, tear them. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Da, 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 da. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. You'll see. You know, that, that's that line they, they, they tell you. You'll see. You'll see when you get older. I always give you that line. Oh, you see, and you be like, yeah, right. Yeah, right, you know. But then you get older, and they have passed on. And now you see, at the older that you get, you see what they were talking about. Okay? You'll see it. You'll see it again, as they say. And in life, when our elders are speaking, Listen to what they got to say. He is teaching, Moses is teaching the new generation of children that's getting ready to go into this promised land some valuable lessons. And he's already given them forewarning, like the elders do us now. Say, if you don't do this or do it this way or such and such, if you don't put God first, nothing that you do will have success. Nothing that you talk about, nothing that in your thoughts, in your mind, your deeds, nothing will succeed because you do not put God first. And when you do not put God first, stuff will happen in your life that you don't think that's going to happen. And then before you know it, you you 50 years old and you got to start all over again and you got to go back to work or whatever the case may be. 50 years old, you ought to be like, okay, I got 15 more years before retirement. Okay. But well, some people start late. Some people start early and then they... You know, whatever the mindset is. And if we do not take heed to what our elders are talking to us about, we are bound to make these mistakes. These mistakes that cost us a lot of time. Wasted time. Wasted time. 
That's what I see when I read the word. It's time. Time is of the essence. He is taking them 40 years. 40 years where they could have made this trip in three days. All because of disobedience. Your time is of the essence. Listen to your elders when they speak into you. And don't waste your time on doing a bunch of foolishness. Okay? Just don't. Ooh, child. I'm 50 years old and now I'm realizing I, I wasted a lot of time not listening. Not doing. Just going around, running them up, doing it now. I'm 50 years old and I'm sitting there like, Dad, if I could have done this like 25 years ago, I'd been good. I wasted so much time on doing drugs and, and running away from stuff that was bothering me and dealing with all my issues and and you know and looking at looking at them for what they were instead of problems they were they were really God was blessing me with the parents that I did not have God gave me grandparents that loved me enough to take care of me I look at the abuse I I endured it, instead of it 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 made me a person that didn't love myself because no one sat down to talk to me about relations, if y'all get what I'm saying. If I had just taken all of that, but at the time I didn't know that. At the time I was too busy running and scared and didn't know and didn't want to listen. And, and, and you know, and I could have avoided a lot of things in my life if I had just stayed where I was at. Instead of running after people, thinking they were my friends, thinking I was going to be, you know, do this, do be friends with people, and people end up, you know, my grandma, my grandparents, you say, everybody ain't your friend. Okay, so I could have saved myself time if I had just listened. Stayed in the books, went to school, got my education, became something, whatever I wanted to become at that time. But... I didn't listen to what God was trying to tell me. I wasted so much time being in the world, being of the world, being of the world, being of the world, doing worldly stuff, doing drugs, drinking, having sex, um, uh, fornicating, doing all this, uh, prostituting, all this stuff. If I had just sat down and made my brain work and put God first, I would have, I would have a different life than I have now. But then I can't hold on to the past. You can't hold on to the past when God opened the door for a future. Okay? So my thing is to everyone that may be listening within an earshot, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to let you know something. It don't matter how old you are. It don't matter how old you are. It does not matter how old you are. When God ready to change you, accept the change. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be some magical stuff happen overnight. It's not going to be that, oh, you know, fairy tale, wonderland. Oh, you know, uh, it's not going to be that. It's going to be one day at a time to get it right. And you have to put God first. And listen to your elders. Listen to them when they're trying to tell you what you need to do in your life in the future so you can have a future. Because there's a lot of young folks out here. They're doing a whole bunch of foolishness. They're watching too many. They're doing, they watching too much stuff. They're doing too much stuff. They and, and no one is teaching them about their health. No one is sitting around... It's like they it, it's like a dying breed. Every day I hear about teenagers suicide. I hear about they going off killing folks. They just go we just had this stuff in Buffalo. The boy went in the store and shot people in the store. What? What? Okay, because he hate, you know, uh, uh, we got to learn, we got to be careful what we teach our children too. Got to be careful 
what we teach them, because what we teach them, they will go out in the world to be. If you teach hate at home, that, hey, it's going to absorb like a sponge. Through the age of 1 to 10, they absorb everything they see. If mommy and daddy fighting, they think when they get older, mommy, you, you, they, they supposed to be fighting each other. And that's what kind of really, you got to be careful what you teach these children. Teach the next generation. What are you teaching them? You know, you got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful what you do. You got to be careful what you, you know, because children are watching. Children are watching. Children are watching you. The children are watching you. They are observing everything that you do. If you, I, I seen a post on Instagram. I seen a post on Instagram the other day. And the little girl, the little girl, she was, she was, um, she was, mommy would give her, she was sitting there in the chair, and mommy would give her things. She gave her some deodorant. The little girl made like she put on some deodorant. She put on some lotion, she put some, she made like she put some lotion in her hand. The little girl put it on her face. She gave her a brush, and she brushed her face with it. Um, what else, the little girl? The little girl was mocking everything she saw her mother do. If her mom put makeup on, if she put the lotion on, you know, she's seeing mommy do all these things. Children observe and heal. Like the... You know. Then you be wondering why your children cussing you out in the store like you a grown person. Because that's how y'all talk to each other in your house. I'm just saying. And then you be wondering why they saying this stuff in public. And be like, okay, well, well, what you think? They heard at home. You don't, you know, and like I said, careful what you teach the next generation. Be careful what you teach the next generation. Be careful. Be careful, elders. You know, and and Moses is teaching Joshua how to do the children of Israel in this moment, how they're going to make it in this new place that God has destined them to be. And he is giving them heed and warning and all of what God has bestowed inside of him. And is passing the torch. Moses is passing the torch to Joshua. Passing the torch My grandma was doing that to me since I was a little kid. But no, I ain't want to listen to that. I know how to buy, I know how, I know about money, I know about how to take care of a house, I know how to get a house, I know how to do I know how to do all that, right? But because of my ignorance and because of me for foregoing, um even even uh foregoing taking heed to the lesson she was giving me, I am behind. I feel like I'm behind. Because she taught me so many good things. And I forsake, I forsook those things to go out here and be a worldly person. And then when my children came along, I didn't teach my kids nothing. I taught them how to take from people, I taught them how to not respect people. I taught them a lot of bad traits. That's what I'm going to say. I taught them a lot of bad traits. And now I see the fruits of what I did not teach them has come to pass. And that's another lesson I said. You're going to see it again. My grandma said, you're going to see this again. And I'm seeing it. So... Be careful, elders, what you teach the children. Be careful, elders, what you do in front of the children. And be careful, elders, of how you speak in front of the children. Speak, see, and hear. That's like they say, you hear no evil, you speak no evil, and you hear. You hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. Okay? 
I know some things are, are, are inevitable, but teach the children something good. Teach them something that they can carry over into the next life that they're going to have. Teach them something. Something. Besides, mommy know how to twerk it and, and daddy know how to... I seen this, this, I seen this very disturbing video. It was not a video, it was a post on Instagram. I don't know if it was a post on Instagram, Facebook, whatever it was. And it was some young people, and they were standing in their dress. They were standing in, uh, the young lady was dressed in a nice dress, and young man was in a shirt and pants or something like that. And both of them holding machine guns. I said, who would want to take a picture of that? Me, I'm a, I'm an older person. I'm 50 years old. And that was so disturbing to me that they're going to stand out in the middle of the street in the neighborhood, she in a nice dress, and he looking like, uh, looking, he's looking unprofessional, and she looking professional, and they both stand there holding a machine gun. One got an AK-47, and the other one got an Uzi. And I know they had, I know they were like, I know they couldn't be no more than, I don't know how old these children were. And I was like, is this what the world has come to when it's teaching our kids? I mean, they think that's stylish to stand there with a gun in your hand and you looking, got all this makeup on your face and you and he's standing there, you know, and got a Uzi standing there, you know, poke they posing. Like, really? Who does that? I don't do that. But then we wonder why our young folks is dying off the way they are. We, 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 they're a dying breed. And we need to get in, and sit down and talk to our children. And we can't let them watch everything on TV. They, because if you watch... I'll tell you one thing. This is my opinion. I remember when I first watched, it was a show. I can't think of the name of the show. Housewives of Atlanta. Not bashing them or not. That's that's them. That's the creator. That's her mindset. That's her business. But to have women get on TV and disrespect each other and talk nasty to each other and then want to fight each other and all that, I'd be like, wait a minute, hold up. When the TV get like this? That's I don't I can't watch shows like I can't I can't even watch a show like that because I feel like that's degrading that's that's making us I, that's making us look bad as black women it's a it's a show filled with black people they're supposed to be regular regular people put in front of a screen on a reality show called Real Housewives of Atlanta, Real Housewives of this, Real. Uh, I'm sitting there like this is some, and then you be wondering why your girls are having so many problems with their self-esteem. Or the way they, or the way they mannerisms, or they carry themselves, and then you want to watch this reality TV with people, and it's like really, and then you be wondering why they go out there and want to fight everybody, cause they see it on TV and they think it's something that 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 they supposed to do in real life, you know, and violence and tendencies and things like that, and it's like wow. Is this what we really is this what we really want to give our young girls what to look at? Our young boys what to look at? I don't I mean, I don't see you know, I We got to do better. Anyway, so be careful what you teach these children. Be careful what you teach the to teach the grandchildren and the great grands or whatever. Teach them about things that su- will sustain them in life and get them through life to become older and become an elder in their community where they are respected. Cause a lot of children these days they don't respect nobody. 
we are they, that's a dying breed where children say yes ma'am no ma'am um no sir yes sir they in in I seen this video. I gotta tell you about one more thing. <laughs> I'm tell you about one more thing. Where the white lady and little white boy, that's this is a video going around. It's on Instagram. And little white boy, he sit there and he slaps his mother. Um, excuse me. Because we do not discipline our children. This is what is happening. Our children are turning on us. Because we do not discipline them. And they think because the stuff they see on TV, they can do to us. But I remember if I even had a thought, my mama, my mama, my mama knew. My mama knew. She said, look, you you better get yourself straight. You be you inside, but I'm going to put you outside. I get your inside voice if I put you outside. The little boy slapped his mama. And I was sitting there like, oh, boy, if I even thought about that, my mama, I'd be dead. She, she kicked my hind parts the next week. And it'd be a constant thing. It wouldn't be no five-minute beating neither. She, child. Anyway, so like I said, be careful what we teach our children. And this is Joshua just passing on the torch, teaching jo- Moses, teaching Joshua of what's to come, what he needs to do. And I want to say thank you to everyone that is taking their time to listen to me. And um, I, I love you. And leave a message. And go check out my website. You can now order my books. You can now order the items on my on my shop page. Okay. Um, finally getting the final touches on my website done. And um, if you have any discrepancies... I will turn around. I I just just call me, you know, just just talk to me, okay? I love y'all and I will talk to y'all later. Love you. Bye-bye. everyone and welcome to LBM TV. I am Sharice Johnson Moore, owner and CEO of LBM TV. Here at LBM TV, our objective is to give you programming that will invigorate, motivate, and inspire you. Our programming will provide you with insight, in-depth knowledge, and solutions in your daily living. We can be seen on every smart TV, smartphone globally. We're located on C1 Media Smart TV app, Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, and Google TV. So get ready to enjoy a positive, uplifting program for your daily living here at LBM TV, where we care about you. Thank <laughs> you.